Moving forward with the show, though, Movie Talk, that's what we're here for. And we are talking about Trolls World Tour, the movie that has threatened to upend the film industry all of a sudden. Would you guys really believe it was going to be Trolls World Tour to send everything into a tailspin, potentially? World Tour. World Tour. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> um, well, as far as Trolls World Tour is concerned, we'll get into this because I have one question I want to pose to you two here. But just to give you background, Trolls World Tour was released, I believe, on April 10th to streaming services. Apple, Google Play, a handful of others. You had to buy it. It was 19.99 to rent it. It was supposed to come to theaters. They opted to release it on streaming. And it made in its first 19 days of release $95 million. Not a bad haul. They usually do not release video on demand uh, grosses. They usually don't. So it was interesting to see that. Uh, in the headline and the interesting thing to note too about this is that uh, studios profit about 80 percent of a film's gross from video on demand versus about a 50 to 60 split with theaters usually it's 50 50 or 60 40 with theaters 60 going to the studio 40 going to the theaters but they ordinarily reap a lot more off of video on demand, which leads people to believe, and Universal Studios even came out and said uh, that they are going to potentially use this model down the road, or at least for the duration of this COVID-19 pandemic. So my question to you, we'll start with you, Joe. Could you see this changing the theatrical model for some movies? Uh, ye- for this year, Definitely. Uh, I don't know about down the line once, you know, COVID-19 is, you know, finally been put away or, you know, we've become very immune to it. Um, I definitely see more studios, I guess, taking this route with it. Uh, I, I kind of like want to bring up like more points, but I'm going to save it for the other conversation too. Um, but I could totally see just it, this becoming more of a natural thing, especially if they don't think a film's going to do that good in theaters anymore. Because we kind of get that already with film studios where they're just like, yeah, you know what? In Europe, this might not do good, so let's just give it to Netflix's uh, Europe uh, thing. Like, um, Annihilation was an example of that. Uh, and even when I went to Europe over the summer, there were tons of films out here in the States, like Shaft and uh, Isn't It Romantic, that were in theaters. And I got to watch them on Netflix out there, which was nice, because I got to save some money on like a really bad movie like Shaft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you didn't get the shaft having to go see it in yeah. theaters that's for sure because i did i did uh dominic what about you could you see this could you see trolls world tour success on video on demand kind of changing the way uh the theatrical model is concerned at least in the present uh in the present yes like joe said i definitely it, it sets a good precedent for as kind of a strategy going forward in during these pandemic during this pandemic and uh any future pandemic scenarios like this so at least uh, studios are looking at uh trolls world tour and going okay so we have a playbook here example. that is developing <laughs> yeah uh, um but in terms of just the new normal once we get out of this um, it, 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 it's kind of up in the air. I should say that, uh, we should probably provide some context that, you know, for a long time now, uh, the gap between, um, theater releases, day one, you know, premier theater releases, and then, uh, DVD releases or digital releases have been, has been getting smaller and smaller and smaller, uh, as the, as the years go by. So, uh, the trends have been going this way. Of course, the quarantine is just it's just a huge accelerant in that direction, kind of forcing forced forced evolution. Although that's that that, that doesn't make sense because it's uh, disease is a natural thing. But anyway, um, or at least is it? Maybe it's man-made in a in Bill Gates's laboratory. But anyway, um, yeah. What I'm getting out of this is that studios for at least 2020 and 2021, even they have a playbook now. Uh, a winning one that makes that makes them money, especially on a movie that's freaking that the 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 movie that showcases all five genres of music. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I have not seen Trolls. I have not seen I Trolls World Tour. Somehow I still sleep at night. Um, interesting <laughs> numbers, though. Two two last points on this. Uh, the original Trolls back in November of 2017, it grossed $120 million over 19 days. So this one grossed $95 million. It'll be interesting to see if they can still recoup their entire budget because they did spend on in-theater 
Paratex trailers, such stuff like that, even before it was announced that it was going to go to video on demand. So I wonder, that's right, I wonder if it's going to be able to recoup its marketing. But $95 million over the first 19 days, that's promising for sure. The only thing I worry about, and this will probably bleed into our discussion at the tail end of the show, but I worry with something like this, because now the new Judd Apatow movie is going to streaming. Uh, the King of Staten Island is coming out June 12th. The thing that I worry about, really, is that movie theaters will soon only be showing tentpole and blockbuster releases. That's personally my biggest fear, is that movies that are smaller, movies that are more questionably successful, I guess you could say, movies they're not quite sure of or they view as risky, they're going to get dumped on video on demand. Your multiplex is going to be all uh, Fast and the Furious. It's going to be all Marvel. It's going to be all DC. Yeah. That's going to be – it's going to be an event thing. It's going to be an event-driven uh, market, of an event-driven venue. That's my biggest it's concern. Really I don't gonna... know how you guys feel I, I think yeah, actually you're hitting a good point there. Like really, the theaters are only gonna be packed during the summer blockbuster season, and then just the holiday season, like Thanksgiving and Christmas. Um, like I, I really, you actually make a really good point that like those droughts where we got like August, January, sometimes even February. Like every once in a while, like stuff is actually released in February. It's big, like Kingsman, Deadpool, and so on. But that's actually a pretty good point. I didn't even think about that. That like it might just be big blockbusters from now on in there. What about yeah, you, Dom? I, I had originally thought that, well, didn't Judd Apatow's movie The Interview already go, because of that geopolitical situation, go straight to streaming? But it wasn't a Judd Apatow movie. The Interview starring Seth Rogen and um, uh, Big Franco, James, James Franco. James Franco. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, that was actually directed, apparently, by Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg, so yeah. not Judd Apatow. He just... You know, yes. part of similar circles there, uh, but yeah, that's that's just sad to think about. Um, I guess my first thought is, if you want to bring back that communal ap- uh, atmosphere for non-Marvel, non-Fast and Furious movies, then um, uh, make uh, uh, allow stoners to smoke it up in uh, in movie <laughs> theaters. And now all Judd Apatow movies, all Seth Rogen movies, you can now finally get that communal experience. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's not fun to think about. It, it sucks too. Cause you, you think about like, you know, films like a 24s films, like, you know, not a lot of people really go see a 24s films. Like I think the, the one that a lot of people want to go see is uncut gems. And I think it's mainly due to, you know, who was in it, Sandler. Like, I think that's really what pulled a lot of people. So it will suck not to see like films like those again on the big screen. Cause I enjoyed seeing midsummer and the lighthouse on a big screen, but I, I can't blame them if they just want to take this route from now on. No, you understand it financially. And yeah. I mean, last or quick point to A24. If A24 is lucky, they'll get as, as they're an amazing studio. They really are. The, yeah. the quality that they have, I swear I've disliked maybe four movies from them out of like, I think the last, I think I tallied and I think I've seen over 40 movies from a 24 since their inception. So that's an, that's a hell of a batting average. Yeah. But like if a 24 is lucky, I, I, this is how I feel. I don't, I don't have the statistics to back this up, but I feel like if a 24 is lucky, they'll get two movies a year that'll do so well and exceed expectations that it'll pay for like the catalog year. Yeah. It'll recoup the losses of like midsummer. It'll recoup the losses of smaller movies you know what i mean i think they they have like their one uncut gems a year or something like that it'll put them over the edge even spring breakers it'll put them over the edge (laughs) i guess like um also like you know especially with um i mean we'll get into this later too but since the oscars are like now kind of like hey you know what uh we're, we're taking it back if you're just only on a streaming platform you can be nominated I think this might invoke even more studios to start doing stuff like that, whether it be video on demand or work out a deal with Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, whoever it may be. Yeah, it'll be an interesting thing to watch. We'll keep our fingers on the pulse of that situation.